Uh, Senator Babette. Thank you, President. My question is to the Minister representing the Minister for Climate Change, Senator Gallagher. Minister, the CSIRO states that energy production is the largest contributor to Australia's carbon dioxide output. The government has made it clear that it intends to ramp through legislation which would see a reduction in carbon dioxide output of 43 per cent. I am concerned that this will cause energy prices to increase. Australian families are already struggling with the cost of living pressures. Can the minister make the Senate aware of how the government will achieve these cuts in emissions and will this result in increased power prices for the average Australian? Thank you, Senator Babette. Minister. Uh, thank you, um, President. I thank Senator Babette for the uh, question and also for the heads up of, on the question um, today. And also, I don't think I congratulated you last week on the first question. I know it's your second one because I got you first, so congratulations on both of them. Um, in, terms of our, in, in terms of our plan, um, the legislation that has passed uh, the House uh, earlier today and will come to the Senate now implements our election commitment to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 43 per cent. We went to the election with uh, very detailed modelling on how we would achieve that. Um, the Powering Australia Plan, which is available uh, to all online, um, but the clear uh, impact of that modelling showed that um, if we were to implement it, which is um, you know, to ensure that we are building a new grid uh, to enable 82 per cent uh, renewable energy by 2030, um, that we are providing the investment certainty that is needed to um, allow those investment dollars to flow and to invest in new energy technology, to invest in solar banks, community batteries, uh, to build the workforce, uh, to also uh, reduce taxes on electric vehicles, uh, that it would also uh, put downward pressure on energy prices. Now, I think we all accept that um, you know, the previous government did nothing for nine years and left us in a situation where we have escalating electricity prices in particular that they hid from the community before the last election, 19.7 per cent increase in electricity prices. Uh, our plan, which is the cheapest form of energy at the moment, is renewable energy. Uh, the cost of coal is expected to be $141, um, gas $133 by 2030. In contrast, the cost of renewables, which we want to invest in, is $63, Thank you, Minister. $63 Your time has expired. per megawatt hour. Uh, Senator Babette. First supplementary. According to the CSIRO, energy production accounts for approximately 33 per cent of Australia's total carbon dioxide output. What other sectors will be taxed or potentially axed in order to achieve your 2030 target? Minister. Uh, thank you. And our plan uh, details how we would achieve the 43 per cent reduction by 2030, which uh, doesn't involve tax or ax. Uh, it's a comprehensive and tra transparent plan. Uh, it involves modernising Australia's ageing energy electricity grid through the Rewiring the Nation plan, the $3 billion investment in renewable metals, renewable energy, uh, component manufacturing, renewable hydrogen, electrolysers, 85 solar banks, 400 community batteries um, and investments in um, our workforce to make sure that we have the workforce to deliver on those. 604,000 jobs, five out of six of them in the region, $76 billion worth of investment. Uh, this is the opportunity that the Australian people need their government to seize, to drive jobs, to lower power prices, to invest in the new technologies of the future and ensure that we can seize um, the, e the energy improvements that we need uh, to bring down our gas, um, greenhouse Thank gas you, emissions. Thank you, Minister. Your time has expired. Yeah. Senator Babette, second supplementary. Agriculture accounts for approximately 14.6 per cent of carbon dioxide output. Can the minister guarantee our hard-working farmers that the government will not sacrifice their livelihoods in order to achieve any of these targets? Minister. Um, again, thank you and th uh, thanks, Senator Babbitt, for the question. We've been upfront about our plans. We won't be cutting agricultural production. The National Farmers Federation supports our updated targets. There are huge opportunities, I think, in the agricultural sector. I know that. 
uh, Minister Watt is engaging with all of the stakeholders on, on those. And we have broad-ranging support right across industry for this plan because they know after 10 years of this lot, they see what's happening out there. Exactly. They see the opportunities, the jobs and the improvements for their areas that will come from having a government that can provide industry with the certainty they need to make the investments and make the change that is coming. It's not only important for, any, for our power bills and prices, it's important for jobs and it's important for those essential industries like agriculture who will be part of the change. Thank you, Minister. That's my kind of party, the United Australia Party.